I'm your host, Logan 23. You're joining me for Ride or Die, Bad Boy Romance, Chapter 9, Heating Up. Saturday sun peeks in through the blinds over Logan's window, waking you up. Mm. Morning, sleepyhead. Your head is resting on Logan's shoulder, his arm around you. He brushes hair out of your face. Did we fall asleep in yesterday's clothes? Uh, well, I mean, you were exhausted and fell asleep on my arm. I was strapped. It was like 127 hours in here. Oh, shut up. I'm guessing that was a movie reference. Your stomach rumbles audibly. You hungry? Yeah, I... Mind flashes to your dad, sitting at the breakfast table with you every morning. Here you go, one L.E. special. You okay? What's on your mind? I was just thinking about my dad. He's probably sitting alone at breakfast right now. That's not your fault. Isn't it? You said yourself it's up to him to accept who you are. Suddenly the door burst open and you and Logan both jump. Moana comes in like she owns the place. You hop up off the bed, distancing yourself from Logan. Are you both wearing clothes? God, you're so boring. There's... This thing called knocking, Mona. Yeah, it's bad when an engine does it, so why would you want me to? Come on, Ellie. You're with me this morning. Uh, with you? Where? What are we doing? Since when do you give the orders around her? If she's going to live here, she'll have to carry her weight just like everyone else. Logan looks over at you with a half-smile. I think you just landed yourself a job. Were you wearing that yesterday? It changed. We're going out. You got up to follow her, and I didn't really have a chance to pack when I left home. Mona turns and looks you up and down. I've got something that should fit. Really? No. 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 I spent diamonds on this black outfit that I like. I'll just stick with what I've got on. Fine, whatever. At least now I don't have to wait for you. Let's go. You head downstairs with Mono. As you pass by Kaneko's office, you see Colt inside and hush conversation with his father. Our only option. Don't think we can time it right. Was that a bug crawling on the bottom of the screen? I'm serious. It's either that or I have bugs in my house now. I'm sick. <laughs> Those two look close. Thick as thieves. Yay, a happy father and son reunion. Seeing them together makes me happy. After all that's happened, it's nice to see Kaneko letting Colt back into his life. They'll both regret it. Why do you say that? Kaneko's reason for keeping Colt away didn't just disappear. Walked him on his car and reached for the passenger door. We're not taking my car. Okay, which one then? You'll see. Now you're just messing with me. Maybe, but if you want to stay here, you'd better get used to a day in the life of a career criminal. You and Mona hop on a bus up to Sunset Strip. A while later, you get off and take a long walk west. Where are we going? We're almost there. Just a couple more blocks. But why are we here? Because Kanika told us to. You don't really strike me as the type of person who does something just because someone says to. How do you end up working for any Kaneko anyway? Well, I... <laughs> because I owe him. You owe him... Your life? Not exactly. I wasn't about to be killed. At least not that time. <laughs> but he did save me from something... I was in a pretty dark place, and he pulled me out. Wow. That's why I'll run with him, for as long as it makes sense. 
All right, we're here. You pass through a narrow alley between two offices waiting around the corner in a car covered in a tarp. What's this? This is the job. She yanks off the tarp. Ooh, that's an old vintage roaster. Hmm. Beautiful. The 1961 Merino M4 GT Malibu. One of the rarest Italian convertibles ever built. Hey, I think I've seen one of these in a bunch of movies. Ever ridden in a convertible before? Not yet. Nothing like taking the top down and letting the wind run through your hair. Especially in a gorgeous ride like this. That sounds amazing. So, what are we supposed to do with it? Keep it? Sell it? Why is it I can't have Mona's hair? Like, I'm serious. I want Mona's hair. Not on me. I mean, I'm talking about, like, our MC. I would love it. Destroy it. What? But why? That or just to ruffle my fingers through it. I mean, what? Marching orders from the Brotherhood. They need this car off the face of the earth. We're to take it to the back of the back to the garage, strip it down for parts, melt down what's left. But it's so pristine. Somebody cared for this car for almost sixty years. Why would they want something like this destroyed? It's probably hot. You know, wanted by the police in a major crime. Then why don't we keep it and use it to turn on the Brotherhood? Great idea. Let's snitch on a gang of powerful current killers. The criminal justice system will definitely arrest them before we're all hunted down. Okay, fine, but still. We, we have to destroy it? In this line of business, it doesn't matter how nice something is or how hard you worked on it. If it gets tainted, you gotta salvage what you can and junk the rest. That's so depressing. That's life, babe. Brutal and unforgiving. I think it's... It's the only way that... If you let yourself believe it. I like that you think I was born like this. And not the, the world made me this way. But we all grow up eventually. Mona reaches up into the rear wheel and... Well, and extracts a set of keys. She opens the driver door, then hesitates, biting her limb. Actually, why don't you take the wheel? In fact, because I'm so generous, I'll give you some pointers. Hope the boys haven't ruined your driving technique already. Who says I need pointers? Trust me, everyone needs pointers. I give them. You're very pretty. I'm in a mood today. Hmm. Not that kind of mood, though. You should drive. If this car is as wanted as you say, I don't want to be in the driver's seat if it gets spotted. Suit yourself, but don't say I'm never nice to you. But it gets in the driver's side and starts the car up, heading to the back in the directions of the garage. Or in the direction of the garage, sorry. While later, Mona pulls back into the garage and the two of you get out. Hey, watch the car for a minute. I've got to go talk to Kaneko real quick. Mona walks off. You hear a car pull up outside. You turn around and recognize the driver immediately. Why are you here? Ellie? Rhea pops out of her car and looks around, confused. Rhea, what are you doing here? I saw you driving around in this amazing car and... So you followed me. You told me you had some huge fight with your dad. I was worried. You can't really be here, Rhea. What is this place? An auto body shop? Are you with Logan and his friends? Hell, you know I've been supportive of you branching out, but this is going way too far. And this is where I'm going to have to take a pillow and smother you with it. You know what? I actually... Well, no. I don't think she's clingy. I think Darius is the one more clingy to at least old school stuff than her. Um, but I also think she needs to be more open-minded, so she's not clingy. Please trust me, Ray. You still trust me, don't you? Of course. I'm just... 
I'm scared. Me too, Ray. But I promise you, I'm doing this for good reasons. One day soon, we're gonna sit and eat ice cream, and I'll explain everything. You promise? I promise. She turns to go, and then runs up and hugs you tight. You put your arms around her. I love you. Please be safe. I'll try. She gets back in her car with one last look and then drives off. Where I'm sure she's gonna yammer and run her mouth to someone else. You return to the garage, your heart weighing heavy in your chest. Across the room, Zima and Toby are already hard at work on stripping down the 61 Marinello, which is jacked up on all four wheels. Hand me the pneumatic impact gun. I'm gonna get these headlights out. Toby, are you even listening? Sorry, I was just saying a few words before we commit this vehicle to the great scrappy yard in the sky. Ellie, maybe you can help. Oh, sure. He helps Emo with the headlights using power tools to quickly yank out the bolts. Great. Nothing gets getting wasted here. Just, you know how you could destroy such a... Oh, those intake valves are sweet. Mind if I do? Really, dude. Anyway. Soon you've helped Zima and Toby fill up the card full of the car bars. They roll it away to be sorted. Still feeling heard after your conversation outside, you rest against the side of the car. Whoa, hey! Huh? You look down as cold wheels out from underneath the car, lying flat on a low rolling card. You trying to drop this hunk of junk on me? I'm sorry, I didn't know you were under there. Can I lend a hand? Cold stares up at you, debating. I just really need to keep my mind occupied right now. Fine. Lay down on that creeper over there. <laughs> it took me a minute to realize what he just said. Excuse me? The cart I'm lying on, it's called a creeper. Don't ask why, I don't know the answer. Drag over another creeper, lie back on it, and roll under the Marilinello with Colt lying side by side. He bites a small flashlight between his teeth, digging his hands up into the undercarriage. We're trying to get this drive shit out. Shaft, not shit. Shaft, out. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so, what's got you all mopey? Uh, life. New Zealand. I mean, moving on. I got in a fight with my friend. Why? So you can make fun of me? Nothing is stupid. Why? So you can make fun of me? Yeah, mostly. Uh, I don't even know why I bother with you. Because I'm so damn cute? You wish. So where's your dad? Still in his office thinking, this thing with the Brotherhood is really shaking him up. Our family isn't used to playing from behind, we're usually the ones a step ahead. Bolt tries to wrench off a stubborn bolt, but it won't move. Damn it! You seem shaken up too. Yeah, well, my dad's finally giving me a chance, bringing me into the fold. Me and him sitting together planning our move, it's what I always wanted. But I just can't figure it out. My dad's counting on me, finally trusting me, I can't let him down. Let me help you. You don't have to do this all alone. The rest of us will be there for you. I know you are, but I don't think any of you understand how powerful these guys are. Bolt still refuses to move. Colt throws his wrench angrily. It clatters along the floor. Screw this! He wheels himself out from underneath the half-stripped car, and you follow. He marches towards his bike. You're leaving? I'm going for a ride out to shore. It always clears my mind. Thompson looks back. You want to come? On your bike? Where else? I've got an extra helmet. I just need to get out of here for a while to think. Hmm. I actually kind of need to do that myself. <sighs> we should get back to work. Gold shakes his head, as if clearing away cobwebs. Yeah, you're right. If we don't finish stripping the car, my dad will kill me, let alone the Brotherhood. Soon you're working together to pry the heavy seats from out of the Marilyn Nello's body. After setting them down, you turn to Cole, breathing heavily. 
I've been thinking about this problem. How to get Brotherhood back, well, off our backs without starting a war. We just need to offer them something they want, something they want more than anything else. That would be great if I if it existed, but they have everything they could possibly want. They have all the power in the city. Well, there's an easy fix that to that, isn't there? Take the wrench out of his hand. We just have to make them think they don't. We should get back to work on the interior panel. Colt stands there thinking. Huh. That night, you're alone in Logan's room, sitting on his work desk, surrounded by open textbooks. The Cuban Missile Crisis took place in October 1962. But your mind keeps wandering. You're done when we say you're done. By 1980, the WHO certified the global eradication of smallpox. Ellie, you know I've been supportive of you branching out, but this is going way too far. The European Union formed in the early 90s with the Maastricht Treaty. And what hurts worse is that you didn't come to me. We always trusted each other, Ellie. The door behind you opens, startling you. Ah! Oh, didn't mean to scare you. He hops on the bed. How are you feeling with everything? I'm okay. Not very productive, though, to be honest. How about you? Anxious, ready, raring to go. Uh, whatever we do with the Brotherhood, the waiting is killing me. It feels like I'm sitting on the set at the starting line. But they won't let me race. Can Ego and Colt still haven't settled on a plan yet? I know. I just hate working for those assholes in the meantime. We finished stripping down the Marinello, just the uh, frame and chassis to melt down now. Still can't believe we're just destroying it. People worked hard on that. To think about how many countless hours went into designing it, building it, maintaining it, it's just a waste. You won't get me to disagree with you. Well, I mean, look how many years we spend taking care of ourselves or trying to, and our bodies all break down over time, so... But you're holding on to something that's already gone. Nothing left but to finish the job. Yeah. Listen, I've got it on a flatbed truck outside to take down to the steelworks. You should come with me. I'll show you how to lower the car into a vat of molten steel. But you've never done that before. I definitely have not, but I should study. Then I'll help you do that first. Really? A steady date with you? Sure. I'm sure I could find some ways to motivate you. And we could melt down the car together later. Motivate me, huh? I always love this song. Very peaceful, tranquil, sad, resolute. It's got a bunch of emotions all together in one. Stay and study alone. I know the Brotherhood wants the car melted fast, but I've got a lot of study studying to do, and honestly, I think you just distract me. Nothing personal. I am extremely distracting. You probably think this is lame, but it's who I am. I don't know if I can change. I might just always be the same old me after all. I don't want you to change, Ellie. Not for me, not for anyone. I just want you to be the one you want to be. As he closes the door behind him, you sigh and get back to the books. After a few hours, you hear yelling coming from the garage. You hurry downstairs to find Zima yelling at somebody. You have no business here! I swear you're wrong. Salazar. He turns to see you gawking in disbelief. <laughs> oh, hey there, princess. The son Logan returns from the steel mill, his face twists with a fury as he heads straight towards Salazar. What the hell are you doing here? Logan, see your eyes looking good. Logan shoves Salazar, who recovers quickly, and shoves him back. Logan! Oh, I've been itching for round two. 
Logan cocks his fist back to punch, but a strong hand grips his wrist and holds him back. Enough! Salazar is with us now. What? What? You can't be serious. Cole emerges from Kaneko's office. We are serious because we're going to need him. Does he have to be in one piece? Oh, <laughs> you're warm up to me. I've got a real fuzzy personality. Cole, what's going on? We need him because I have a plan. One that'll get the Brotherhood off our backs once and for all. In fact, Ellie gave me the idea. I did? Yes. When you said that they had the city under control and you were like, you just need to make the illusion that they don't, and... Yeah! And to pull this off, we're gonna need to work together and not be, to e be at each other's throats. Salzer smarks grotesquely at Logan, who simmers. This better be good. Trust me, it is. <sighs> you guys can't tell I'm in a really crappy mood today. And I agree with this. Um. So Logan said, be the person you want to be. And so I guess this is a part I've never confessed to people. I don't know who I am. I really don't. I have tried my whole entire life to be what everyone wants me to be. You put on a mask and you try and be happy for others. You try and be a strong, even possibly so stronger then people need you or want. You're the person who every day carries a special needs brother on your shoulder and you do it without complaining. But inside, you're gasping for breath, you're, your knee has not been in good shape for a while, you're getting older, weaker, your body's breaking down. And mine more so than most people my age because of health issues. But then I also don't know who to be. I've never known. Every time I tried to get a grip on who I am and what I wanted to be, everyone shamed me, put it down, knocked me to the ground so much so that I didn't want conflict. I didn't want people to be unhappy with me, so I changed. I've always changed for everyone else. And throughout your entire life, you don't know what to do anymore. You get lost, and I am lost. I have swirled and, you know, gone and, and just kept going around that drain, you know, the old saying. You just keep circling it. You keep circling it. And you just try and stay alive. That's about the only thing you can get aim for. I truly don't know who I am. I really don't. I look at the world and I don't even know what the world wants anymore. It's all just convoluted and complex and stupid. It's all so goddamn stupid. I'm so tired. You know? I mean, I even look at my own channel, I'm like, what, what, what do people want? And I don't even know. I don't even know anymore. People complain, they ostracize me, they critique me, they hurt me, they aim to destroy this community at every single moment's notice. And I, again, I constantly am trying to change to be what everyone wants. Don't voice black characters, don't give them that voice, don't do this, don't do that. Constantly changing to something I set out and wanted to, it to be fun. And it just blows my mind. It, 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 it just... I don't know anymore. I put out all these content videos and I put all these diamond editions and I try my hardest. I give every single ounce of myself. And... For what? 
Honestly, if any of you can think of the answer, by all means, tell me, because I'm... I'm exhausted. It's probably the most exhausted I've been in a long while. And I typically, again, I kip on the face, don't I? I make everything seem alright. And yet, I'm going to be honest, for the first time ever, I'm not alright. I don't think I've ever been alright. So, I know. Typically, I aim for everybody to be happy and cheery and make everyone else's day, but honestly, I mean, I'm a guy who has a short lifespan ahead of him. I have shit health. I'm unhappy. I have tried to make everybody be happy. My community is at a standstill. It's not growing. I have a brother who's in his room right now, and I'm trying to keep a safe, uh, a, a straight face, even though he has an incurable, barely treatable condition in which he's suffering from right now. My whole entire life is shit. And I am alone. So, yeah. I guess you could say the mask is completely off today. And that and hardly anybody watches Ride or Die, Bad Boy Romance anyway. So, and where do you rant, really? Where do you rant? Go to Twitter, Facebook, or... or I mean, really, where... where I, I don't want to rant. I just want to get it off my, my shoulders, I guess. Get it off my heart. Even though, even after saying what I've said here, in a very watered-down summary, I still feel nothing. I feel like this was completely pointless. I feel like all of it's completely pointless at this point. I don't know. Maybe it is.